moving on now, we're, uh, we're going to look at our second uh, lesser known grape variety. This is um, a grape called Aburiu, and Aburiu comes from is an, an indigenous uh, grape from the southwest of France, particularly from the Côte du Marmondais. The Côte du Marmondais is, uh, is a small Appalachian which straddles the Garonne River, uh, just southeast of Bordeaux, and it really is the true home of uh, of Arburiu. The thing about Arburiu is that rather like the Alicante, which we'll come on to uh, in a minute, it's used as a tanturier. That is uh, a grape, that, literally a tinter, a grape that uh, adds colour and a bit of beef to, to other grape varieties. And Arburiu is traditionally blended with uh, the traditional uh, grapes of Bordeaux, Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, Malbec uh, and so on. In this particular case, we have a 100% um, Arburiu made by a very sought-after winemaker called uh, Elion de Rau, who is based in a little village called Coquimont in the heart of the Côte du Marmondais. And uh, Elion de Rau is, uh, like the other two, is a biodynamic uh, winemaker. And he has impeccable um, vinous uh, pedigree. He's worked with the great Zint Humbrecht in Alsace. He's also worked at Gorge de Pair uh, in the Languedoc. And uh, he farms uh, approximately 16 hectares um, around the village, but uh, of which only eight are currently uh, in biodynamie, as they say, or, or made biodynamically. The thing about this particular wine is, though, is that Elion has treated this wine with a method known as carbonic maceration, whereby the grapes, the uncrushed berries, are covered with a layer of carbon dioxide and an inter, I'm no scientist, but an intercellular fermentation apparently takes place uh, between the, the top and the middle um, uh, part of the tank where the berries are with the carbon dioxide, while the weight of these uh, the berries on top crush the berries at the bottom of the tank and fermentation occurs naturally. So that's carbonic maceration and the hallmarks of wines that have been treated by carbonic macerations as they are quite sweet, have cherryish, are lighter, uh, have if some of them Beaujolais Nouveau for instance have a slightly sort of bubblegum aspect to it. So we talk about high tannins with our Buryu, but hopefully the, uh, the carbonic maceration will have smoothed out some of these tannins. So let's have a look. With our Buryu we're expecting uh, a darker colour as so in fact we do have here. Again sort of a darker, darker in colour, a nice dark ruby red, gorgeous, gorgeous clear dark ruby red, really nice. You can see how this would be used as a tanture, tanturier in, the, in other blends. On the nose, well, I, sort of, I guess we'd be looking for uh, coffee, cassis, a bit of tobacco, so let's have a sniff. Yeah, we're getting that, we're getting, we're getting, certainly getting the black fruits. Yeah, tobacco. Yep, certainly a bit of certainly a bit of mocha, a bit of coffee there. So nice sort of beefy, spicy aromas. Completely different to the uh, yard. The uh, yard got summer red fruits, and this we're getting black fruits. So yeah, so on the palate. Hmm. Hmm. Really good. Much beefier, much more full-bodied. Not quite totally full-bodied, but much more full-bodied than the um, than the Ur Yard. Plenty of pepper there, plenty of spice. Again, uh, good texture. The tannins really are are well balanced. They're quite discreet. They're not um, they're not overt at all, as you might sometimes uh, um, expect from Nalburiu. Absolutely delicious. Very smooth. Very smooth wine. Mm. We're getting plenty of wine in our palate here. Swill it round your palate, cover every part of your mouth, and uh, again, we're getting good acidity on the side of the tongue, hint of sweetness uh, at the front. Again, the finish quite lingering in this particular case. The finish is still with me. It's um, yeah, and I'm breathing out, and I'm getting bits of uh, bits of black fruit, uh, cassis, and. Uh, yeah, a bit of dark chocolate even. Absolutely delicious. Um, really, really good stuff. I think uh, food-wise with this, 
you'd need something beat, beefy, quite meaty, quite savoury. I think you'd be looking at uh, rabbit stew with beetroot, um, oxtail, oxtail with um, black olives, my favourite oxtail. I don't know, are we still allowed to eat oxtail? I don't know after the, uh, after the mad cow disease, I hope so. Wild duck, uh, it'd be delicious with wild duck. Really good uh, offering from Elion de Rowe. If you get, uh, if you see any of the wines from Elion de Rowe, grab them. He really is uh, a very good winemaker. Uh, it's not exactly rocket fuel, it's 12%. Uh, price wise, well, again, I'm afraid it's not cheap. It's £17.50, but not a lot is made. Um, it's from old vines where the yield is much lower, but the quality is higher. Uh, not a lot is made, as I say, he's a very sought after winemaker, and all this unfortunately adds to the price. But worth it, you know, great Sunday lunch wine, good, good with roast lamb, it would be great with roast lamb studded with rosemary and garlic, juniper berries, fantastic. So, um, 17.50, but I think worth it, worth it. So, there we go, we'll move on to the next wine now, the Alicante. The third and final grape we're going to take a closer look at is the Alicante Boucher, to give it its uh, proper name. Uh, the Alicante Boucher was discovered, cultivated by uh, a chap called Henri Boucher in 1866 to be precise. He uh, crossed, or he cloned the Petit Boucher vine with the, the Grenache vine and came up with the Alicante Boucher. The beauty of the Alicante uh, grape is that it, uh, rather like the Erillard, it has a thick skin and is very vigorous and high yielding uh, and needs a lot of sun, a lot of heat to, to ripen it. Uh, but having a thick skin it's also uh, very resistant to, to mildew and pest and, uh, and all that sort of thing. So a very useful, uh, useful grape, it used to be the, called the workhorse grape of the Languedoc. Uh, Alicante was also used extensively during the Prohibition era in, uh, in, in America in the 30s. Uh, as uh, you could still get uh, the same colour from the third pressing of an Alicante grape, uh, which meant that the, uh, that the bootleggers could water down the Alicante without uh, losing its colour. So again, uh, a very useful um, uh, grape during the Prohibition era. Alicante was grown widely in, in the south of France, in the Languedoc. There are plantings in, uh, in California. Uh, in the Napa Valley, in the Sonoma Valley, there are plantings in Portugal uh, and in southern Spain. But uh, it has f gradually fallen out of favour really in, in France and is uh, not made in many places. In fact, it's almost extinct in, in many areas of France. However, there remains a small parcel of uh, Alicante farmed by a lady called Jacqueline Borry from Chateau Olio Romani, who are based in a little village called Montserrat which is uh, in the, uh, the Boutonac region of the Corbière, halfway between uh, Carcassonne and, uh, and Narbonne, I guess. And she has a small planting, a few hectares of Alicante, which she farms, again, biodynamically, uh, and from which this uh, really nice, smooth, uh, fruity, reasonably full-bodied red comes from. So uh, the uh, Borri family have um, sort of farmed about 130 hectares uh, in the Corbiere region. They've been there since the 19th century. They make a great range of uh, great range of reds and whites and rosés. Uh, and as I say, this quite rare Alicante, only 500 cases are made. So what's that? 6,000 bottles. It's uh, it's quite a limited in availability. So let's take a look. And I think what you'll notice first about this, if you're uh, drinking along with me, is the colour. This colour, this is unfiltered, by the way, unfiltered and unfined. This is a really dark, um, inky purple, almost uh, purple black in colour. And this is why it was so useful as a tanturia, because it really would add a lot of colour to, the, uh, to these rather insipid blends. A Grenache and Serum or Verge or whatever. So on the uh, on the on the nose, well, oh, a delicious perfume on the nose. Again, it's rather like the Arburio. A lot of black fruits there, a bit of red fruits, uh, quite earthy, savoury notes. A bit of uh, bit of dark chocolate. Absolutely fabulous, fabulous scent to it. Yeah, lovely, delicious. So, and on the palate, I think we're expecting quite a quite a full-bodied, but smooth wine here. 
Mm. Mm. Absolutely fabulous. Fabulous stuff. I have to say, this is one of my favourite wines. And we sell a heck of a lot of it here in our wine shop and on the website. It's very smooth. Uh, again, quite um, quite good tan. The tannins are well balanced, as you would expect from the Alicante grape. It has, has very good acidity. I'm feeling this acidity in the side of my tongue. Quite mouth puckering. Absolutely delicious. Not a lot of sweetness on the top of my tongue. But uh, at the back of the throat, yeah, a bit of, uh, a bit of tannin. Absolutely delicious stuff. Full, reasonably full bodied in texture. And as I say, you get this uh, good acidity with some sort of earthy mineral flavours. The finish is quite lingering. The finish stays is staying with me. When I breathe out, I get the black fruits again. I get the, the sort of um, hints of the garig, the sort of herb, wild wild rosemary, wild, uh, wild basil, that sort of thing. Absolutely great wine. Uh, food wise, well, Alicante goes very well with uh, with beef, great with roast beef, great great Sunday lunch wine, good with a uh, shoulder of lamb, that sort of thing. Again, you'd need something meaty or beefy. Wild boar, you can get wild boar. Uh, you ask your butcher, uh, any decent butcher should be able to get hold of some wild boar for you. This would be great in a wild boar uh, wild boar stew. And uh, yeah, abs absolutely fabulous. So uh, price, well, this again is a 14 quid odd, I'm afraid. But uh, again, it's only 500 cases made. It's made biodynamically, which adds to the cost a little bit, I guess. Uh, quite sought after. But we do sell absolutely loads of this in the shop and on our website. It makes a great wine for Sunday lunch. It also makes uh, a good wine to drink by itself. I could quite happily drink this by itself in front of the telly. Uh, it's very approachable, very, um, very easy going, but uh, with, with hints of complexity. Mm. Hmm. I think I'm going to take this one home with me, you know. Absolutely delicious. So there we are. That's the Alicante. We've tasted the uh, the Uryard, and we've tasted the Arburiu, three lesser known obscure grape varieties. And uh, I think they're all delicious. And, uh, and I hope if you uh, grab a bottle, um, grab one if you can, and I hope if you taste them that you'll enjoy them uh, as much as me. So, uh, thank you for tuning in. Um, I'm going to clean up now, and, uh, and while I clean up, I think Luke's going to uh, play us out with a bit of music. And this time we're going to go with uh, the mighty Motley Mobile and Saturday gigs. Take it away, boys. In 17, we all agree, a King's Road flat was the place to be, because Chelsea girls are the best in the world.